My name is Hannah thompson Weeman. I'm the Vice President of Communications for the Animal Agriculture Alliance. The Alliance is here at IPPE and I'm doing a presentation later this week about securing the poultry industry's future and protecting against the threats by, from animal rights activist organizations. The Alliance is a nonprofit and our mission is to bridge the communication gap between farm and fork. We've been working in that area for 30 years. This is actually our anniversary here in 2017. Uh, and everything that we do is with the focus of securing the future of animal agriculture and bringing everyone in animal agriculture together to collaborate and figure out how we can get ahead of problems facing our industry. One of those problems is the work being done by animal rights activist organizations. I wanna be very clear, there's a big difference between animal rights and animal welfare. Uh, animal rights activist groups are just opposed to people using animals at all, whether it's for food, for entertainment, for fiber, whatever the reason is, if it's humans using animals, these groups are opposed to it and they use a variety of different tactics to further their mission of convincing people to not eat milk, meat, poultry, and eggs. Uh, these groups really uh, capitalize on the fact that your general consumer is very disconnected from animal agriculture. Grocery shoppers, people preparing food, even people in decision-making positions at restaurants and retailers and food service companies are very disconnected from animal agriculture. These people haven't seen farms firsthand. They don't know much about the industry. So that leaves them susceptible to believing some of the myths and misinformation that is spread by these activist organizations. One big issue we saw before was the push for cage-free eggs. These organizations very effectively effectively used a variety of different campaigns to push college campuses, food service companies, restaurants, and finally retailers to make commitments to only serve or purchase eggs from cage-free operations. As a producer, you know that that's a very a big challenge that producers are having to rise up to. It adds a lot of costs and really doesn't necessarily have a direct trade-off for animal welfare. Animal welfare is a lot more complicated than just a housing system, uh, but the group's goal in mind is not about animal welfare, it's not about animal care, it's about making production less efficient, driving up costs. Uh, these groups have flat out said they feel like they've won the battle on cage-free eggs, so now they're turning their attention to broiler chicken production and specifically pushing for strains of slower growing birds. Um, so they're pushing for use of certain genetics that causes birds to not mature as quickly. Uh, their argument is that it is an animal welfare concern, but there's really no research to support that, but it does take longer for those birds to reach market weight. That means more input costs, more feed, uh, less profit for companies and for you as producers. And that's, again, the end goal. It's driving up costs, making production less efficient, and forcing consumers to make tough choices about how many animal products they're able to afford. In order to achieve these, this mission of pushing up costs, adopt, making these certain practices be adopted, uh, these groups really hit the industry from a lot of different angles, but what they found that's very effective is pressuring a restaurant and retail chains to adopt these policies. If they can get a large scale national retailer or restaurant chain to make a policy like this, it's a lot more large spanning than state by state legislation, which has historically been uh, one of their major areas of focus. Uh, as you'll recall, in the cage-free example, as soon as McDonald's and Walmart made those pledges, it was really a domino effect, and they're looking to replicate that in the broiler industry. So now is the time to be proactive and get ahead of this issue. Uh, the National Chicken Council recently released some research which looked into the slower growing chicken trend, and again, the jury is still out on animal welfare. More research needs to be done on whether this is a benefit for the birds as far as their welfare, but it's definitely more expensive. It definitely requires a lot more inputs, a lot more land and is not great for sustainability and has a larger environmental impact. Uh, so it really um, is not necessarily a great thing all around. It causes some challenges. Um, and again, the benefits have not been demonstrated. So research like that and communicating the benefits of uh, current ways that we're raising chickens, how you're taking care of them, the great strides have been made in genetics to make production more efficient, uh, make us able to produce uh, a large scale of birds so consumers can have an affordable and safe product. That's the story that we need to be telling. So I, I really encourage you throughout your supply chain, wherever you get your birds from, whoever you contract with, wherever those birds end up, there needs to be open lines of communication uh, and that relationship with restaurants and retailers is just so critical. So now is the time to be reaching out, having discussions, hosting farm tours, and any way that we can take the mystery away from production. If you want to learn more about the Alliance and some tools that we have to help you accomplish this mission, you can find us online at AnimalAgAlliance.org or on pretty much any social media channel where there is Animal Ag or Animal Ag Alliance.